They go for superficial stuff that won't matter. Nobody really cares. People focus on the superficial things like, oh, I want to be this. And they don't actually think long enough, why does it matter? On the other side, a lot of people just follow somebody else's plan. You are so disorganized. This is a terrible career path for you. Okay, welcome, Toby, to the Ramp Podcast. Thank you. Excited to be here. Yes. So super pumped to talk to you today. Toby is very active on LinkedIn. He posts a ton of amazing job search, career, productivity, entrepreneurship content, anything related to navigating your career. Toby's got great content around that. So super excited to chat with you today, dig under the hood a little bit, learn more about you and all the types of advice you have for job seekers and people looking to improve their career, improve their lives. Awesome. I'm excited to jump into it. Sweet. So first question I always ask everybody is just who is Toby Oluwale? So Toby is a brother, a husband, a big Arsenal supporter, but also I am an entrepreneur, co-founder of Three Skills, the creator for the past three years and mentor to a lot of up and coming creators too now. I'm just passionate about helping people get the most out of their careers and live fulfilling lives because nothing affects your life as much as your career and you know your source of income right so that's always been very dear to my heart i i think my dad grew up as an entrepreneur and so did my mom so that's in my blood and then my dad worked in hr my mom was an entrepreneur even till today so i, I think it just naturally selected me as part of the family tree to to go down that same route Cool. Can you tell a little bit more about how you offer support or guidance to job seekers or career professionals? Yeah. So we've done a lot of things, but right now I have a newsletter called Paid in Full, um, just helping people maximize how much they can earn inside their jobs, outside their jobs while living fulfilling lives. I've been doing these LinkedIn live audios, which have been really great. I have a thousand people coming out every week and doing like a live podcast for like an hour or two. And then we also have three skills. Uh, we have a program there, a six week program with lifetime support after, just called uh, Project Pivot. And that's been a really, really powerful community. We've had, you know, it's a cohort based program. It's been helping people transition into more fulfilling careers since 2021. Cool. Going off of that, so you obviously give a lot of people advice about how to navigate their careers, and you have taken a lot of that advice yourself to begin with and figured out a lot of different things. So you've progressed from working in sales to being a content creator to being an entrepreneur. Now you're working for yourself. You've got a lot of different things that you're doing. How have you thought about like either from earlier in your career as you progress through your career? How have you gone about making decisions about all right, this is something I want to explore or do more of. And then in the case where you've actually changed jobs or transitioned from one career to the next, like what was the thing that ultimately pushed you from one thing to the next? Like most people, like I just stumbled into my first career, right? Like someone gave me a 40K job offer. I was like, $40,000? It's like, I'll sign that in a moment, you know? So yeah. I stumbled into sales. I used to sell hoverboards in the university and this tech sales CEO is like, if you can sell hoverboards, you can sell technology. So hoverboards, um, this is like back to the future. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, those ones you stand on and I would just ride them around the city and people stop me and I pull out my little Shopify and like sell it to them, you know? Wow. Uh, so that's how I, I started. And so I got a, a sales job. I, I, I was working in companies that didn't have strong products though. And so it just felt like I was failing every year in, in sales, right? First company goes bankrupt, second company. I get fired after six months, third company, never really made the commission because the product just wasn't proven. At that point, like, you know, three years into my career, I, I kind of was giving up on sales. But every year I'd been applying to Shopify because I wanted to get around some entrepreneurs. I knew I wanted to leave corporate. I had set a secret goal to leave corporate before I turned 30. So I wanted to get out and I needed to go through Shopify to get that experience to into entrepreneurship and work with some entrepreneurs and see how they figured it out. So I applied every year for three years, seven attempts. And 2020, I finally made the transition into Shopify, but also out of sales and into customer success, which ended up being like the perfect role for my personality type and who I am, you know? 
Yeah. Tell me about, I think it's really interesting. A lot of folks, I think, struggle with this idea of where they want to get to and then the what they need to do in the interim in order to get there. Like a lot of times the place you want to go, just simply it's not possible to get there with the next step. So let's say, for example, someone's earlier in their career and they know they want to maybe start their own business or they want to become an entrepreneur or they want to even I want to be a VP of sales or VP of marketing or something. Well, it may be that's not accessible to them immediately. They need to build skills. They need to build a network and they need to do this or that the other thing. How did you think about, hey, I've got a goal of, you know, getting out of the corporate world or becoming an entrepreneur, but I feel like, or why did, I guess, did you think you needed to go get those skills at Shopify or how did you make that decision? Like, I need to go here first before I go there. I mean, one of the cheat codes I had was, you know, when I was like 21, I, I wrote my own eulogy. I actually went like, you know what, at the end of my life, this is what I want to be said about me from the perspective of my spouse, my kids, my colleagues, my friends, my community. It's like a three page long thing and I read it every single year on around my birthday. Now, once I figured out what I wanted to do and what I wanted the rest of my life to look like, it made it so clear what I had to do right now to get there. And so I knew that I wanted to be present for every birthday, present for every special moment in the people's lives that I love. I knew that I wanted to be extremely generous with my time, my money, and my energy. And I knew that at the end of my life, I wanted people to say, Toby lived a full life. And so once I figured that out, I went, I have to go the entrepreneurial route. And I have to go the entrepreneurial route, not in uh, like, not with commodities, but with things that allow me to have really good margins and really good work-life balance. So that's why I went the knowledge route, right? The knowledge products. And so I actually was able to, very similar to like a house that already has a blueprint, I was able to build fairly quickly because I had a plan on how to get to that next point, right? And that, when I coach people, that's what I realize is missing. That's what, that's module one of all of my programs. Before you start building all this stuff, what are you building? Where are you going? Why? And if we can figure that out, it's so much easier to then map it to the right job or to the right business or to the right strategy right because you figure that out so i've had that superpower for like six years seven years right and it that keep it dear to my heart right and as long as i'm on track i know that i'm not gonna fail and so even leaving my job at 28 like i didn't do it in a risky way I, I had already doubled my salary i did it in like the safest way i could possibly do it but it i had gone through shopify and gotten the lessons i needed in those three years to be able to make that jump and get the most out of my career. Wow. So outside of, or including this writing your own eulogy. So if someone's like, Hey, I don't want to do that. It seems a little bit morbid. Are there other strategies that you would recommend for someone to figure out what they want to do with their lives? Cause that's a really hard thing to do. And I think that's super fascinating that that's how you approached it. And it's obviously given you a lot of success, but how do you talk to people about like figuring out that first building block? Yeah. So, I mean, the, I, I still say, like, if you don't want to write your own eulogy, just figure out what the end point looks like in terms of, you know, even 10 years from now, 20 years from now, like, what do you want that to look like first, right? And and not just from a, like, I want to be a senior manager. Like, you mm -hmm. got to ask the five whys. That was something that we used to do at Shopify is you ask why five times until you get to the real core of the issue. Okay, I want to be a senior manager. Why? So that I can make $200,000. Why? Well, so that I can afford a house. Well, why? Well, so I can like raise a family. Why? Well, because I want to leave a legacy for my family. Okay. So that's your why. Mm. That's, that's why you want to be a senior. So now you understand that you don't have to be a senior manager, right? You want to leave a legacy. Now you got to find, this is the second step, find every way that you know, or that you don't know that can get you to that point, right? And I had an old mentor that used to say, like, discover everything that you can do and understand that you might not be able to do everything you discover, but it's understanding, like, you can actually get to these places that get you to your why without necessarily compromising your values or your time. There's so many ways to build a career and to get, and there's so many jobs, right? And so those two things are very practical, right? Like if you, if you ask the five whys, and then you go on a conquest to discover roles that exist that will actually light you up, 
right? And, you know, one question that we ask in, in our program is, what is something you can do for long periods of time that energizes you? Like you can do it for like six, seven hours and you still feel energized after like those, those things are core to then looking at job descriptions and going, Oh, I'll be able to do this. So for example, I can inspire people with my words for long periods of time. So that's why as a sales coach, I crushed it. I crushed it as a sales coach. I was not a good salesperson though. Right. Mm. And so in, in terms of like, okay, how do we actually translate who we are and our vision for our lives into our careers? If you will start there, you will actually be able to move faster. You go slow to go fast, right? And so by slowing down all those years ago to go like, okay, what does the end of my life look like? Or, you know, what is this vision that I have for my life? I was able to fast track and everybody goes like, you did it so fast, right? But like, did I, like, I just had like a really, really clear, it's like going somewhere on Google Maps versus like a big old map, right? That's the difference that I had, just so much clarity, right? Wow. Okay, so it's similar similar to that, that's that's an amazing framework around just getting very clear as early as possible so that every step you're taking builds upon itself. Yeah. What do you feel like is are the mistakes or the things that people do wrong as they're navigating their career that maybe prevents them from getting to where they want to go? It sounds like one of them within an earlier answer was they stop at the highest level of what they think their goal is rather than drilling down. So it sounds like that's yeah. one of them is they think, oh, I, they, they see that there's a role or a title or something like that out there and they don't perceive, well, what's going to happen once I get there? Is that going to actually make me happy? Is that going to be what I want? Or is that just something that I thought I wanted? So maybe similar, similar vein, what do you see the most common things that people do that they get wrong as they think about navigating their careers? They go for superficial stuff that won't matter. Nobody really cares if you're a director, you know, like maybe, maybe your mom cares, but you know, most people don't. Right. And so people focus on the superficial things of like, oh, I want to be this. Right. And they don't actually like think long enough for like, okay, you know, why do you want it? Why does it matter? Right. And then on the other side, a lot of people just follow somebody else's plan. You met a business analyst making six figures. Now you want to be a business analyst at all costs. And I'm like, you are so disorganized. This is a terrible career path for you. You know, like, and, and you have to be able to go like, it's not just about, okay. Like it's a very human, right? We reach for the highest branch we can see. Right. And, but really what you want to do is go, okay. If I understand like, you know, these are the raw materials I've been given and you know, this is what really inspires me, then you can go find roles that align with that instead of you trying to fit into boxes that you should never fit into. Like you, if I was an engineer, every bridge would fail. I was supposed to be a civil engineer. That's what my dad wanted me to be a civil engineer, bro. The bridges would, I'd be getting sued left, right, and center. <laughs> I have no attention for detail, right? So like one of the first things I set up when I set up a new company is I need someone that is the number two, that doesn't miss a number, a letter. You know, there's a girl that I'm working with right now she can spot a double space in a blog. Like if there's two spaces, she can spot it. Wow. So now I can freely chase these massive visions and projects that I have, knowing that I have someone in the right space, that this is something that they are naturally inclined to do, right? And so I think that's the mistake people make. They just reach, they, they're chasing someone else's dream, trying to build their lives, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you actually want to figure out what, you want to do like and and understand that at, at its core and speak to someone in that role maybe three or four people in that role to understand if the job description is actually the same as the day-to-day -day in that job so that you don't end up taking something that sounds good on paper senior manager of social media but really right. you're just the one running seven accounts right like you want to understand what those things look like Got it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And what you said earlier about discovery being really, really important, even if you don't pursue things that you discover, but I think a lot of times people will choose or navigate their career within the confines of 
whatever they see immediately around them or whatever influences have been immediately available to them. So for example, like a lot of people, probably their parents are their first yeah. source of influence around, oh, you should be this or you should be that. I think a lot of people conceptually understand nowadays, oh, like I may be able to chart my own path outside of what my parents want for me or something like that. But mm -hmm. then they maybe don't guard as much from the things they encounter further on. Like, oh, they get to university and they're and they see their friends doing this or they have a certain number of majors or things ahead of them or they see a friend go into this career path or that career path and aren't taking the time to do the full suite of discovery i was reading some of the content you published recently one of the things that you posted was a long thread about things you've learned from recently your 29th birthday 29 yeah. things you've learned and i want to ask yeah. you there's there's a few of these that i wanted you to just clarify or like speak on what they mean to you or kind of how you learned these things and why you think they're they're so important in, in where you've sure. gotten in your career so the first one is nothing affects your life as much as your career yes i mean this is kind of how i got into like we built three skills because i was living with my sister she graduated from university with a 4.0 gpa she's self-taught in career and one of the smartest people that i've ever met in my life genuinely could not find a job for four months could not find a job self-confidence on the floor he's crying in the kitchen one day to me and going like listen i think you know we came here as international students to canada so she's like you know what i think i'm gonna go home or like you know i want to i just kind of want to give up and it's affecting her mental health it's affecting her confidence she's not going out as much so it's affecting her relationships does not make money no car right like everything rent borrowing like it's just everything was so tied to this thing so i, I made her a promise i like listen in a week you're gonna have a job and i made a couple calls got her in front of an interviewer or a hiring manager prepped her for it she lands the interview on the first call triples her salary in the next four years buys her own car has her own place through the roof walks around different travels on her birthdays like it was so clear that this thing affected everything else. And I never forgot that. So the second person I helped was my sister's best friend. Then I helped my wife. Then I helped my brother. Then I helped my wife's best friend. And then someone pulled me aside and went, hey, do you know people pay for this? And I was like, no way. And that was how we started three skills, right? So I'm yet to see something that affects people as much as their career. Oh, how the levels of stress you feel affect the levels of cortisol in your body, which affects your exposure to diseases, right? Like it's all very, very, very much tied. So I don't believe anything affects your life as much as your career, the friends you have, where you live, whether or not you can have kids or date or marry, all those things get tied back to it. And so that's why I feel like I'll always have a space in my life and in, in my businesses to, to help people in this area. Got it. Next one is it's never too late to start and it's never too late to pivot. I mean, People just wait, 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 wait. And then one day they're like, oh, I should have started. That's the perfect time to start. Just start at that point. When you go like, I should have started, it's a great time. So I remember starting on LinkedIn, like seeing Austin Belsack and Justin mm -hmm. Welsh and all these people, like you already grown to 100,000. What's the point? You know, these guys are already there. And I started three years ago, right? 850 posts in now and 125 million impressions you can have told me like this was possible when i started three years ago right yeah and now people see where i'm at and they go well you know it's saturated it's never saturated it's never saturated there's four billion people online i had a young guy who was 19 he started a coffee company three four years ago grew it to like a hundred two hundred thousand dollars and sold it coffee is the most saturated market in the world yeah <laughs> you know so it's never too late to start, right? And then on the other side, people start building ideas. And I always say to my students, like, you're not that smart. If you start to realize like, hey, I think we're building the wrong thing. You can pivot. Mm -hmm. You can just pivot. You can just at any point in time go, let's go this way, right? Because Netflix was, you know, doing these, you know, deliveries for DVDs. And then they just kind of pivoted, right? And like you've seen the biggest companies pivot. You've seen Apple pivot, you've seen Google pivot, you've seen Facebook pivot. All of these companies have pivoted because it's, it's never too early to go like, hey, I, I don't think we're going the right way. We should go this way. 
right? And to give it a shot and see if that will accelerate your growth, right? So I think you have to stay humble career-wise, business-wise. It's never too late to start. Some people are like embarrassed that people are, what are they going to think if I start now? And then it's never too late. It's never too early to pivot. It's like, yeah, that was your idea, but you can just go another way. You're a human being, right? It was an old, I don't know if you ever saw it, it was a meme online. This girl was like, you're, you're not a tree. You can move, mm. you know, like, and, and I thought it just hit me. I was like, yeah, you're right. I can just go that way. <laughs> yeah. I like a lot the just idea of like biased action and pace mm -hmm. towards trying things, I think tends to obviously it doesn't work in every single industry, like hardware or like building a bridge or something. You don't want someone yeah. to, to you don't want someone you're halfway through building the bridge and you pivot it to the, to the that, left. Yeah. <laughs> but for most like digital or tech or, you know, average jobs out there, like moving fast and learning as much as possible and then being willing to, to pivot when you feel like you should or feel like you're not heading on the right path, I think is super valuable advice. Okay, I've got two more for you. The first one is if nobody hires you, hire yourself. Yeah, this one is big for like new grads and transitioners, right? Like I see, you know, we used to see a lot of people that they're like, oh, like I changed my resume and I'm like, nobody's like giving me a shot. Nobody's giving me a shot. Like I'm trying to, you know, apply for this role and like I won't even land an interview. Like, listen, buddy, okay, you are in the most competitive job market in the world right now, right? Like you apply for a job, there's 400 people there, okay? Just do something that shows initiative, that shows that you're not waiting for anybody to give you a job, you can create one for yourself. It doesn't even have to pay you. You just have to get the experience, right? So we built three skills and then I put it on my resume. I wasn't even making money on three skills yet, but we had helped 30 people get jobs. And I yeah. learned about Facebook ads. I learned how to build programs. I learned how Google ads work. We weren't making money on any of it, but I took the courses and I applied it and I knew how they work. And I put that on my resume and I hired myself as the co-founder of three skills which is a, what, what did I pay for that? I was like $200 to incorporate, you know, like $50 <laughs> for the website. And, and I did something right. And it was the same for my co-founder. She literally started teaching people Spanish lessons, built a business around teaching people Spanish lessons. That's how she got into entrepreneurship. My other co-founder went to women and said, I'll run your social media account. She was coming out of teaching. I'll run your social media account for free. Got the experience now as a director of marketing at a company. You don't need to wait on people to give you a shot. Give yourself a shot. Everything mm. is online and free. ChatGPT is 20 bucks. YouTube, free. Udemy, courses, 10 bucks. Like, what are you waiting for? Shopify is a $20 website. They got a $9 plan. You know, like you're going to spend more than that on Uber Eats delivery. <laughs> you know, so it's like you might as well make the investment, learn the skill, build something for yourself, hire yourself. That's the philosophy on that one. Got it. Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense, particularly if, you know, sometimes your job search can be three, four, five, six months could be up to yeah. a year. So I think the idea of how do you create value or improve your marketability or your, your place in the, in the job market in the meantime, while you continue yeah. to apply for jobs and stuff like that. I want to come back to that in just a minute, because I want to chat about like the new job search or maybe not the new job search, but just what does a job search look like in 2023? But I've got one more, which is your paycheck is a discount on your true value in the market. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's always funny, like talking to people and they go like, oh yeah, I make like $30 an hour, $50 an hour, right? I'm like, nice. Like, do you believe that your company makes $50 an hour on you? That's, that's impossible. That's just terrible math, right? right. Like if your company's hiring you and they're paying you 50 bucks an hour, Apple makes like what, like three, $4 million per employee, right? So it's, it's one of those things where if you don't realize like, and it's not for everybody, some people, you should take the discount and just build forever, you know, but once you understand that if you're getting paid 50 bucks an hour, you're probably worth 250, 500 bucks an hour, right? You can actually start to go, how else can I make money? Cause it's not about making money per hour, right? Time is finite. It's about being able to go, okay, how do I make money outside of time? Like, is there another way to earn money that doesn't discount the time, right? And that was the big revelation for me when I started 
building my companies and helping people. And instead of getting paid, you know, 40, 50 bucks an hour, I'd make, I remember I, there was once I got paid $2,000 to come train for an hour, the same hour that the company was paying me 50 bucks for. It's the same brain. It's the same experience worth 2000 over here worth 50 bucks over there. So I believe that if you're getting a paycheck, yeah, of course, like you're shopping you out at 50 bucks an hour and they're making 250, hundred thousand dollars an hour. Right. And for you to really get freedom, especially time freedom, if you work 160 hours a month, you got to be able to make the same amount in 16, 30 hours. And now you've bought back a hundred some hours. Right. And that's how I've always got all my businesses with the projects I work on. My goal before 30, buy back a hundred hours a month. And I knew that I'd be free. Right. And I think that's how people should think is like, if this is what you're getting paid at work, what can you be getting paid if you actually tried something? Right. And just, it's a question <laughs> more than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So switching gears a little bit, just to talk about today's job market. You mentioned it's one of the most competitive in a while. You've you've written on LinkedIn that 2023 feels very different in terms of the job search compared to past years or recent job markets. What do you mean by that? And, and why do you feel like things are so difficult right now for job seekers? Yeah. I mean, it's tough because like, yeah, a lot of people have been laid off, right? A lot of companies have also like, you know, become a little warier. They're like trying to use AI to do stuff that humans used to do, right? So you're just naturally competing for less spots in a lot of ways. And then the other thing is because a lot of the companies laid off like the recruiting teams first, they don't want to go through 400 people for each role. So they just don't post the role. Right. Mm. They just like go through referrals or like that was happening even when I was leaving Shopify. Like they're just like, no, no, don't open it up. Who knows somebody like just so we can go through like 10 profiles. Right. So that just means there's a bunch of roles that are not posted online, which has always been the case with job hunting. But then it means the roles that are online, there's more people competing for those roles. If you see it, there's more people competing for it. So the the strategy right now needs to be one. You need to be not just on LinkedIn, Indeed, and Glassdoor, or like the major ones. You need to be on every flipping platform that mm -hmm. has company partnerships. I'm talking every platform. Like I've been posting a bunch for the past couple of weeks, but I'm seeing like platforms that have like, you know, four day work week companies, just a bunch of four day work week companies. And there's like a hundred companies on there that I've never heard of. And then wow. you're seeing like, Companies that are hiring like remote, I, I found one platform, they had 15,000 job openings on that one platform. And I literally never heard of any of the companies. I'd never heard of any of the companies. And so what I'm realizing is a lot of these companies are going to these platforms going, hey, you know, we don't want to open up, like just bring us people like, very quietly, right? And we'll screen through them, right? Hired Hippo is another one. They just go to your profile, pair you up with the company. You can go right into the interview process and those companies pay for that kind of access. So if you see a platform, you should be on it. Like none of this, like, oh, I don't want to dilute my, just be on it. Set up your profile, get your resume in there. Maybe you'll find something. And then on the other side, you have to have a commitment to meeting two to three people a week. You have to, because opportunities lie in relationships. So many opportunities lie in relationships. I got a text message the other day from this guy. He goes, hey, bro, listen, my friend's hiring a sales rep. He doesn't want to post the role because, you know, he's going to get a bunch of applications. Do you know anyone from your, you know, old team that might be a good fit? I was like, how much the compensation is like $180,000 to $250,000. You're hiring a $200,000 role via text message. Like, what is this market? You know, like, but that is the length that people are going to, to avoid going through 400 applications. So the second thing you must be doing is meeting people. You have to... You will hear about jobs through the grapevine. That is where 80% of jobs exist in on the platform called the grapevine, Le legitimately. <laughs> like that is where they are. And so the, it, through your network, you have to be able to get in touch with people so that if it's not about who you know, it's about who knows you when the role is about to come up. That is the most important thing in this market, right? Like if they've thought of you 
and you're there and someone just gave their two week notice. They don't want to open it up and they think of you. You now have insane competitive advantage, right? Yeah. So totally agreed with that. And I think particularly one thing that, that we recommend a lot is thinking about your job search before you're in it. So I know for myself, one thing that I didn't do a great job of earlier in my career was I got to my first role, first company, and I basically just put my head down and I, I like maybe logged onto LinkedIn twice a year or something. And again, nothing wrong with that. I was very happy mm -hmm. in my role. I was very happy at the company. Um, and I do think there's a time and a place for putting your head down, working hard, et cetera, versus like always being this mindset of like, what else is out there? What else is out there? Mm -hmm. But I think that people undervalue the opportunity to network when they're not in the job search. And there's something also mm -hmm. about reaching out to people with no expectation. Like, hey, mm -hmm. let me, I just want to network with you, get to know you. I'm not in the market for a job. I'm really happy where I'm at, but I just want to learn from you or I just want to add value to you, whatever, versus, hey, I'm in the job market. Do you have something for you? I think a lot of people tend to bow up a little bit when they feel like people are reaching out to them, looking to get something from them. So yes. anyways, with all that being said, how do you recommend someone, you said two to three people a week. How do you recommend people navigate going about doing that? We have a philosophy that we teach at Three Skills, which is like having a network is not the same thing as networking. Mm -hmm. Networking is very transactional in nature, right? Like it's very much like even if you're going like, hey, like, you know, I want to support you, you're going in for something, right? And people can always tell. So what we teach is, you know, how do you actually build these relationships, right? That are strategic. They're strategic relationships. They're not, you know, your best friend at Amazon with their strategic relationships. And we taught this in like a, a newsletter recently, I, I call it complimenting people's babies. And what you do is you reach out to anybody. And I, I truly mean anybody. And you compliment something that they're proud of. That could be their career, their business, a recent raise, whatever it is. And we have a little like method that we teach called ABC, right? You compliment, you compliment their accomplishments, right? So, oh, they went from this role all the way up to like director, right? you compliment that, right? They're very proud of it. I can guarantee you, right? Or you compliment their business, right? As a whole, if you're reaching out to founders, co-founders, they raise money, they got featured, whatever it is, or you compliment their career, right? Or like you essentially compliment something about them. And then you make the ask to find out how they did it. Not to just how did you do it? And what you will learn is people love to talk about how they became successful. They love to re relive the journey. They're telling the story more for them than for you. Hmm. Now, when they leave, what do they think? They go, hmm, that person was a great listener. I love talking to them. It's how humans think. And now, all of a sudden, you've won the ear of someone. And if you're going through that conversation, eventually, they're going to go, what's your story? And this is your shot. This is your m, &M chance. This is your, like your one shot Do not get your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. You tell them a story about where you are, not just your past track record, but your future potential. You get them to buy into that. And now they found someone who's complimented their career, complimented their business, complimented their accomplishments. That is a good listener that actually has something that they can buy into. You have a new strategic partnership. Now, I will refer you for the company because you're going to make me look good. If I bring you in as the hotshot, you're going to make me look good, right? And humans are inherently selfish. That entire process is selfish. You're complimenting me. Selfishly, I, I like that. You're li listening to me. Selfishly, I like that. You have a lot of potential. and I can bring you in and make me look good. Selfishly, I like that. And if you will understand the psychology of humans and use it to your advantage, I can't tell you, the, the day I left Shopify, I got called up for a director of sales roles, quarter million dollars. They're like, we want you to be a director of sales. Someone had talked to me about the, I was like, Dude, I have like, four, I have like three, four years. I, I know nothing. I know nothing. You know, yeah. like I can't even take that role, you know, but that's what happens when you sow a lot of these seeds, no expectation, like you said. And now people think of you, oh, this role's coming up. I should probably think of this person. They're going to make me look good if I bring you in, right? That's what, that's what we've been teaching. And it is worth like a charm, right? People get in front of like really, really powerful, influential people 
because yeah. of that strategy. That's fantastic. One thing that I might add to that is I've found a lot of times when you're, you mentioned like it's really critical when A, you're reaching out with no expectations, no asks, nothing. You're simply learning, growing, connecting with them. And then you mentioned at some point they're going to ask about you and like, what have you got going on? One thing I found that that is pretty effective when you get that opportunity is to focus less on showcasing all your accomplishments or like thinking this is the opportunity where I need to like prove myself to them. But one thing I like to do is share hard challenges that you're facing with, that are really interesting that you're or hard problems that you're currently trying to solve. So let's say like at your current company, you're like, hey, we just launched this new thing and we're trying to roll it out and we've been getting really good momentum, but we've, we're trying to solve these two channels that we're working on or something like that. Don't obviously go oh. too, too in depth. But I, the reason why I like doing that is two things. One is it helps you come across as someone that is like jumping into hard problems and is like excited and passionate about Very doing true. hard things and solving stuff. And then on the off chance that they have experience with that thing, or they've solved similar problems like that in the past, they're going to jump at the opportunity to say, oh, that's really interesting. What we did in my company or what we've done in my, in my past is do this, this, and this. And so mm -hmm. then not, you're giving them another opportunity to share more about their journey and feel like it's almost interesting, like there's the concept of reciprocity and things like that. Yeah, 100%. and so, and there's obviously the like give someone a little bit, and then they'll they'll feel they'll feel obligated to give back to you. But there's also mm -hmm. when someone has helped you, they now feel invested in helping you in the future, or they're they feel almost yeah. like, hey, I I gave them recommendations on things. Now from this point forward, any successes they have, any things that they do, all the good that they're doing, I'm some small part of that. And I think yeah. that's really powerful and, and a big reason why, you know, you talk about the network, how powerful that is. And it's, it's more important that they think of you versus you, you know, going to them proactively. I think that's, that's really, really powerful. I like that actually. We're going to incorporate that. Okay. And then one, we're, we're, I know we're almost here at the end. I've got maybe one more final official question and then I'll, then if you have anything else you want to add or just final thoughts, we can, we can wrap up with that. Last question is you write a lot about new tools, new technology, kind of like how the, the job search is changing. What would you recommend for people? You mentioned like getting on all of these non-traditional job boards or spreading your network wider and as well as building your network and stuff like that. What about like new tools or new technologies that weren't available a few years ago that, and I promise this is not a subtle attempt to get you to, prom <laughs> to promote ramped but genuinely it's it's totally fine whatever whatever you you want to recommend or talk about just how you navigate like using ai or using technology to help you out and saving time in your job search yeah i mean job searching especially now is a full-time job right like or can be and i think the the cool things like around ai and like these tools that are coming out is they're giving you, so if it used to take 45 minutes to craft the resume, get it ready, you know, tailor it, do all this stuff, and then get it going, you have all of this time that you can buy back by being able to do it in 15 minutes, right? Like, And that's, again, back to the core concept of now you can do three in 45 minutes instead of taking, you know, 45 minutes to do a single one. So obviously I love RAM to like, because of how much is built into it to allow people to move faster, like the auto apply, like there's so much that's like, you can buy back so much time and save your energy for the interviews, right? So that you're not just like going through and spending hours, you know, just trying to get the first interview. And then there's the other things of, you know, writing a cover letter, all those things shouldn't be taking a ton of your time. There's even AI tools to help you prep for interviews. You can upload the job description will be like cut cut out some questions you'll probably get asked and you can record it hear it back like it's amazing what's what's been put together right so to me the tools that exist today and, and i share some like probably once a month like hey you need to check out these tools it's because you have to be able to save your energy for the interviews right like if you're getting trained just putting together the the resume and and everything else you're not going to be able to actually go in and win them over when you're under pressure and you need to, right? 
So I love those tools like Brand, I love Teal, I love Kick Resume, I love Udly, I love Big Interview. There's there's so many. I have like a whole AI job search playbook and they are so brilliant for helping you actually focus on getting to the job. Awesome. Cool. Well, that's, that's all the questions I had. I'll, I'll give you an opportunity if there's anything else that you feel like we didn't touch on that you feel super passionate about or want to share. I think the, the last thing I want to share is like communities are a massive hack right now. These tiny communities, right? There's Monday Girl, there's Rev Genius, there's Pavilion. They're massive hacks. It's, everyone's already there because they want to be there, right? Mm -hmm. So in terms of like building a network, meeting people, right, with no expectation, all these people, 30,000 people, alpha, 100,000 people, right? Like they're already in there. They're already chatting. They're already building relationships. They have events, right? Like there's already a bit of affinity and the common ground there. Those are really, really big hack to building a network that you can probably leverage later on. Cool. Toby, thanks so much for being on and, and appreciate your time today. No problem.